Spider-Man has been one of the hottest topics to discuss among journalists and pretty much every outlet that covers anything in relation to Hollywood because Spider-Man always seems in a weird state of flux in regards to what happens next. One day you can literally have a report that says, hey, we're doing more films. And then the next day, the same report from the same website is updated saying, actually, somebody's backpedaled this and said otherwise. And same thing with the actors involved with these. One day, Tom Holland says, I think I'm done. The next day, he says, I can't wait to do more. And then the third day, he says, well, we don't really know what a plan is. I may or may not come back. So there's all sorts of mixed messaging. So let's go over the troubles. Are there any troubles behind the scenes and what I realistically think is happening here? So is there more trouble brewing behind the scenes with Sony and Marvel Studios and Disney and the rights to Spider-Man? I'm just going to say no, but no, that has an asterisk. And you have to understand what I'm trying to tell you. Sony owns the film rights to Spider-Man. They are continuing to play ball with Marvel Studios and Disney out of necessity and out of what they get out of it. Just like Disney and Marvel Studios are playing ball with Sony out of what they get out of the deal. Specifically, Spider-Man remaining in the MCU. No matter what happens, no matter what they agree upon, no matter what's said in a public spotlight, the suits behind these deals, the suits that own these characters that are tied up with them, are always watching out for their best interest. There is no scenario where the rights holders over on Disney are going to look at Sony and say, so Sony wants to put all their stuff in the MCU just so we can keep Spider-Man. What do we get out of it besides Spider-Man? Well, you get Spider-Man but they get to reference Captain America and possibly use him? Yeah, no, that's a losing deal on our end. So that's always a discussion that's happening because you have to be careful with it. And what I realistically think has been happening with Spider-Man No Way Home, with everything beyond it, it's the same thing that happened prior to Spider-Man Far From Home. And that's the fact that the discussions are constantly evolving and growing and changing. And every time Sony announces a new project, that's another roadblock that they have to overcome. Because what happens when they announce a new project? Let's say what happens when Sony announces the live action Spider-Gwen film? What happens then? How do you handle this? Is it going to be a Gwen in the MCU? Is it going to be a multiverse Gwen, which actually would work because that's the comic book origin? Is it going to be something that's an amalgam where both studios are helping? Is it going to be something completely different that stands on its own and doesn't connect to Venom or anything? And then they get into the issues over what can you reference, the nitty gritty in the details of the development and origins of that character, the contracts and all that, which always has to be brought up because again, as I referenced, the suits behind these deals. So when I see people talking about how there may or may not be trouble and disputes among characters in regards to what they do with Spider-Man, I think that's factual, but it's not as bad as it was before because they have worked out deals. Hence why we're getting this film. Hence why Venom goes to the MCU. Hence why they're going to reference events from one film to the other. And it's all being a directional change for the entire MCU with the introduction of the massive multiverse. Don't forget the third Spider-Man film was never going to be about the multiverse, but they made it that. It was originally rumored to have Kraven and it looked like that's what they were going for, but then the fallout happened and direction change, and now we're getting a Craven film. You think that's coincidence, or did they play off the ideas that Marvel Studios had? Just like how they did with Venom, jumping to the MCU. Last minute addition that served a purpose. That was only made possible after Sony agreed to keep Spider-Man in the MCU. 